Hey there kids, welcome to another math video. This is for Eureka Math Grade 5, Module 4, Lesson 27, Homework. And it's all word problems today. Yay, objective at the bottom of the page, solve problems involving fraction division. They should say solve word problems involving fraction division. Uh, the great thing about Lesson 27 is you don't really know what you're going to get. So you really have to make sense of where the numbers go. What is the whole that's being divided? It's like you're on a mission to find out what is being shared or divided because that is going to go first. That's your dividend. That's what's being split up. So read carefully. Hopefully you already did this. This should be done. Also, the problem set uh, should be finished and you should have watched my other video so you know what you're doing and you've had some practice before you get started. But I will work this out and then you can see what you did right and if you did anything wrong. So let's get started. Kelvin ordered four pizzas for a birthday party. The pizzas were cut in eighths. How many slices were there? Draw a picture to support your response. So basically they all want us to, every problem says draw a picture, that means a tape diagram. But what if you can't figure out how to do a tape diagram? Draw some pizzas, I don't mind. Um, I know some teachers might be more particular about what to draw, but draw anything that you can uh, think of. If you did four round pizzas and then cut them in eight slices, that's fine. Anyway, your four pizzas could be four tape diagrams, and they're cut into eighths. So as you create your eighths, you're creating all the slices of pizza. So it becomes very clear how many pieces because it's eight in each one times four. So how do you set that up in a math way? Well, you have your four pizzas that are being shared into these eighths. And so when you write this, remember to set it up always. This is dividing with a fraction, so you're gonna keep it and then multiply by the reciprocal. You know you should get 32 because you should have four times eight, and so 32 slices or pieces. Uh, how many slices? So there you go. So they're really not that hard if you can uh, get it set up the right way. Number two, Virgil has one sixth of a birthday cake left over. That's what he has. He wants to share the leftover cake with three friends. What fraction of the original cake will each of the four people receive? So Virgil's gonna have some too. Draw a picture to support your response. Now when you only have one sixth of a cake, then what you have is you have one thing and it's divided into six pieces. And this is what you would shade, okay? So you have one sixth here and this is what's left over. He wants to share the leftover cake with the three friends, which makes four people. So draw a picture like this and then show your math. You only have one sixth, that is the whole. Remember the whole comes first and this is being shared by the four people, four whole people. That looks like four over one. So hopefully you set it up like this. Now once you have your first or initial expression, keep, change the sign, flip, so that you get 1 24th, and that is the answer to what fraction of the original cake will each of the four people receive. So that's this piece right here, one of those fourths will have the double shading, which is 1 24th each. Boop, boop, boop. Okay. All right, at the bottom, number three. A pitcher of water contains 1 fourth liters of water, or I would say 1 fourth liter because it's only a fraction of one. The water is poured equally into five glasses. How many liters of water are in each glass? Draw a picture to support. So if we only have a, a pitcher that contains one fourth, then the whole thing I have, if that's my pitcher, it only contains this. This is one pitcher and this is my one fourth, one fourth liter. Okay. 
Now the water is poured equally into five glasses. So what I have is being shared into these five glasses. One, two, three, four, five. Okay? This is the picture that supports this expression. Now that you've written it, keep, change, flip, multiply. So it's 1 20th of a liter that each glass will get. So your double shading is going to be in that one little end piece there. Okay, so that is 1 20th of a liter. So the whole thing is 1 4th, but that one little piece is your 1 20th in each glass. Now, but wait, there's more. Turn the page because you have your 1 20th of a liter that is important for part B. Write the amount of water in each glass in milliliters. So this is the liter, but I need to convert to milliliters. So that this is a conversion. Remember, when we get to the word problems, they kind of throw everything at you, including the kitchen sink, which is what you're going back all the way through module four. Okay, oh, that's just a phrase, it's an idiom. They're throwing everything at you, even things that are weird. So uh, 1 20th of a liter, uh, use your formula. Remember to write this by copying, multiply by one of the old, okay? Then copy it again and multiply by the equivalent in my new unit. How many milliliters are in one liter? Hopefully you remember, but it's a thousand. Okay, so the millis, remember they're three place value positions away. Uh, so that is 1,000 of these little teeny things in one of those. Now you set it up one times a thousand over 20. And because you can cross cancel, I would immediately take out, well, you can do it two ways. You can either take out the zeros and then divide 100 by two, or you can just divide 1,000 by 20 either way, and you should get 50. And then I'm kind of out of room here, so I'm just going to put it next to it. You end up with 50 milliliters new unit, okay? All right, hopefully you got that one right. Next one. Drew has four pieces of rope, one meter long each. He cuts each rope into fifths, four pieces at one meter. How many fifths will he have after cutting all the ropes? All right, so we've got, you can make one or you can make four separate, but they're all gonna be eventually four meters. Okay, now each one of these one meter pieces is cut into fifths. One, two, three, four, five. How many of these little tiny things will he have after cutting all the ropes? So if you've got your four meters, which is a whole number, divided into fifths, then keep, change, flip, and multiply by the reciprocal. Remember, that's a fancy word for flip this upside down. 20 pieces, but it's actually 20 fifths. How many fifths will he have? So he'll have 20 fifths. Now, part B, how long will each of the fifths be in centimeters? So we gotta come back, look at what we have. Now each of these little tiny guys is one fifth of one meter. Okay, so we wanna think about the, uh, the equivalent of meters to centimeters. And how many is that? That's gonna help you to know that. So remember that centi, if you think about the King Henry died unexpectedly drinking chocolate milk story, 
Then you've got your unexpectedly is the units, that's where the meters live. And then the chocolate is for the centi, and that's two places away. So it's two place value positions. That's where you get the 100. So it's all, see, coming back together. So one-fifth of one meter, but I would really like to just write this in centimeters and start with that. One-fifth of 100 centimeters. And then you can, uh, we're just multiplying. This is not dividing. It's a fraction of a number. So this is also good that you don't get into the habit of, well, now I'm going to keep a change and flip it with everything because you can't do that here. This turns into a it's straight multiplication, straight across. Now it's division, 100 divided by 5. And so... Uh, each of the fifths of a meter is going to be 20 centimeters long. All right, so hopefully you got 20 centimeters. Okay, now getting over here to this last section. A container is filled with blueberries. One sixth of the blueberries is poured equally into two bowls. What fraction of the blueberries is in each bowl? So let's take our container, make a tape diagram. And we don't have any numbers other than it's just a container. And it's in six pieces. So make your half and then put three pieces in each half. Now, one-sixth is poured equally into two bowls. Okay, so one-sixth is poured equally into two bowls. So what fraction of the blueberries is in each bowl? So this is going to be like this part here. So I have one-sixth divided into two parts. So if you want to know the fraction, keep it, change it, flip it, and you end up with 1 12th of the container in each bowl. Bowl. And so that is your 1 12th. But it's just 1 12th of the container. We don't have any other numbers, ounces, pounds, or anything. But we move on into B, and they start asking us about numbers. Now here we go. If each bowl, right there, the 1 12th, has 6 ounces of blueberries in it. Hmm, okay. So now I have my model again. They want to know how many ounces of blueberries were in the full container. How many ounces? Okay, now I do know that one-sixth has two pieces and that each bowl has six ounces. Six ounces in each bowl. Okay, so I have these two little bowls. So that makes a total of 12 ounces. And now you can, I mean, you can think about it in terms of splitting them all, but why? If you have a number for one of the pieces, why not just multiply that 12 times the number of pieces you have, and there are only six. So you can put it down here and carry over if you need to, because six times two is 12, and this one carries over. Six times one is six, plus one is seven. So 72 ounces in the whole container. Okay, because you figured it out. If you know a part, you can know all the parts. You can know any number of parts, and you can also know the whole. Don't forget to click subscribe. And come back again, and I will help you with your math. All right, we're on the final letter here. If one-fifth of the remaining blueberries is used to make muffins. How many pounds of blueberries are left in the container? Okay, 
So we've got one-fifth of the remaining. So now we've got to switch back to pounds from ounces. So I've got 72 ounces in my full container. I've used some for the bowls that they were poured out. So from your full container at 72, we used 12. They're all ounces. You could label it. That's always helpful. So you end up with 60 ounces, okay, that we have to consider. Make a tape diagram with your 60 ounces because this part's already gone, so that's not relevant anymore. But the 60 ounces is the remaining. Now we need to divide the remaining into this fraction. like my pieces got bigger as I went. Okay, no, they're all right. So five pieces here, one-fifth of the remaining blueberries. These are the remaining blueberries. Make it clear. One-fifth. Um, sorry, I'm not going to shade that one. Let's just label it. Used to make muffins. Okay, so this is used for muffins. How many pounds of blueberries are left? So what is shaded here? Well, that's four-fifths of what? 60 ounces. Okay, so now we have a fraction of a number. Hopefully you got that far. And then you can set it up and cross cancel because remember I hate to do big uh, multiplication I want to simplify it and do small multiplication so 60 divided by 5 would make 12 now I have 4 times 12 so I get 48 ounces left which is not the answer to my question but I'm getting closer so how many pounds of blueberries are left? Well, at least I have the ounces. 48 ounces equals how many pounds? And this is our last step. 48 times one ounce. 48 times, what is one ounce in relation to a pound? Well, it's 1 16th of a pound. And then 48 times 1, and 1 times 16. Let me just move this over here so you can see what I have. I have 48 sixteenths. And you can simplify. Um, you can divide. 16 is actually uh, a factor of 48. So 3 times. 3 times 16 is 48. And so your final answer is three pounds. And that's it. That's it for today. So I hope this is helpful. Yep, the last page is blank. So I hope this is helpful. We'll see you on another video. Come back again. Goodbye for now.